What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So uh, here we are again. It's the end of the year, and I had to ponder my life's choices and failures throughout the year, how I continually purchased new cameras and then sold them, returned them, whatever it is, and the gas continued in full force for 2024. And this channel has become now about me stopping with the gas for uh, for new camera equipment. And so I think this time I've got it nailed. I know, famous last words. You were like, you're a liar, Eric. You constantly buy new stuff. Well, I think I've got approach this time that's going to work. And as you can tell by the title of this video, it's one camera for everything. Or uh, what am I titling this? Multiple cameras to cover different scenarios. So let me take you down real quickly what got me to this point. I was in Florida, as you guys know, a couple of weeks ago, I had the Fujifilm X-H2 with me and I left that trip kind of frustrated with the X-H2. Nothing wrong with the camera, awesome camera. It's me, I realize it's always me, it's always been me, it's my problem. People get real upset on YouTube when I criticize a camera and sometimes those things are very um, warranted complaints, but a lot of times it's just me. And what I realized was I'm trying to make the camera something it's not. <clears throat> so in the case of the Florida trip, the Fujifilm X-H2 was a great camera. It just was too big for what I was doing, you know, uh, running around trying to take candid photos of my family and be on vacation with them. It was just the wrong camera. For parts of that vacation, it was the right camera. I wanted a more, you know, substantial camera in my hand, but nonetheless, it wasn't for me. And so I've got a pile of cameras next to me. And I'm going to show you what I have is my kit for 2024 and my goal, the promise from this video, which I'm making this on December 21st, is to not purchase any new cameras for six months, regardless of what comes out, regardless of how much exciting stuff happens, and to just hold on to these because I have enough cameras here to tackle everything that I need. And so before I show you what they are, I kind of want to give you... Um, two conversations I had during that trip or just after the trip that made me think, yep, I, 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 my, it's, it's me. It's been the approach that I had. And what I realized was is that I, I was always trying to find one camera that to do everything. And that's never, ever going to work. Either some days I want a big camera. Some days I want a full frame sensor. Some days I want a micro four third sensor because I want small lenses. Sometimes I want a pocket point and shoot. Some days I want a big behemoth grip because I want the comfort... Sometimes I want a rangefinder, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I want an OVF, sometimes I don't. All those different things. And all those different changes for me are what caused me to buy and sell a ton. And it was the driving, driving factor, the gas. And I realized I was trying to get one camera to do all those things, and it's technically impossible to do that. And during my conversation, uh, there's, a, a, I guess, a friend. I don't know. I meet a lot of you guys through YouTube. You guys talk to me on Instagram through direct messages. And he said, hey, listen, man. I was like you, you're about a year behind me. He's like, I bought, he had a Leica. He's like, I just shoot this. He's like, I have a Fuji as well. And he's like, and if those two cameras aren't what I'm looking for, I just use my iPhone. He's like, I, I, I compartmentalize the cameras and I just let them be what they are. And I pick the right tool for the job. I know you've heard that a million times on YouTube, but it's very, very much true. The second conversation I had was kind of a, um, an aside from that was, is like, hey, you keep switching all these cameras. They're so different from each other. Why don't you just buy one of everything? And that's kind of the approach I'm going to take for 2024 because in the past where I've gotten to that point, I look at it and go, there's too much gear, which is true. And it just bothers me that there's money sitting around and I don't like it. But if I think about them as investments in my photography over the long run, I'm going to spend a lot less. So let's go through the different cameras that I've picked up, what I have sitting next to me off camera here, and what I plan to use for 2024. And I think this is going to be enough to stop me from purchasing any cameras for at least six months. And that's just because I want to checkpoint myself. It could be longer. So let's see. Well, first and foremost, before I get going, this is a Fujifilm X-T4 recording me. I will probably sell this camera. In fact, it's up for sale on Fred Miranda right now if you guys want to buy it for me. Go get it. All right. <clears throat> the first camera, the most important camera that I always want is a pocket camera. For my life, my lifestyle, I'm busy. I always want a pocket camera. Now, I've purchased pocket cameras in the past, and I use them, and then I sold them. And I sold them because they don't have viewfinders or because I want interchangeable lenses or pick any myriad of reasons. So what I went out and did is I decided that, you know what, the perfect camera, one of some of the best photos I've ever taken were on this camera right here, the Ricoh GR3. And so I went and picked up another GR3, um, just the 28 millimeter equivalent version, not the GR3X, because 28 millimeter is more 
versatile to me. And in fact, this camera, as I go to Colorado in a couple weeks, skiing will be primarily the camera I have on me, especially as I'm out running around. I'm gonna try and get a fanny pack and put this in there, APS-C sensor, snap focus. It has its flaws for sure, but this does a lot of what I want for a, a pocket camera and the ergonomics are unmatched when it comes to a pocket camera. And so this is camera number one. Now, camera number two, the kind of the do everything camera, a ton of different cameras can fit in here. You can, you know, and for me, do everything means video, photography, so it's gotta have good autofocus, it's gotta have a flip screen because I do stuff like this. Um, you know, it's gotta have good lens selection. I prefer full frame sensor, but you don't have to have that. That doesn't really matter to me as much. And uh, that was the X-T4, but I picked something else up. And um, this camera is kind of the do everything camera. I just got this, this right here. Hold on, you guys can't see that. This is the Sony A7C two. Um, now I had the original only Sony a seven C and I actually liked it a lot, but I kind of dogged it on this channel because of two things. The EVF was absolutely atrocious and there was no front command dial like there is on the a seven C two. And it just felt like I was kind of struggling to work with it. I'm going to tell you right now, I think this camera answers all those problems. The grip is better. It has the, uh, the exposure triangle on three wheels plus an exposure comp dial. Um, it's amazing autofocus, the new menu system, the EVF has improved. It's still a low panel dot, um, but it's got better magnification and it's awesome. And I always really loved this lens right here, the Zeiss 55 millimeter F 1.8, because it's got a lot of character. And so this is like my do everything camera and it'll eventually replace this X-T4 as I sell it um, for video and just everyday stuff. And if I get asked to do a wedding, or portraits or whatever. Again, I'm not a professional photographer. I'm a hobbyist that sometimes get asked to do things. This camera will be able to do the job. So again, we got the small camera covered, the pocket camera. We've got the do everything mirrorless camera in the A7C2. And then I went and said to myself, what's my like, I don't know, you call it like a passion camera or a niche camera. And so what this camera is, is it offers different shooting experience that's not the norm anymore these days. And, you know, that can go a different couple routes. There's a couple cameras that stuck out to me. Uh, the Fujifilm X Pro, whatever it is, 3, 2, and maybe upcoming the 4 would fit that because that's unique. Um, the X100 would fit that. The Leica M10, M11, whatever M would fit that as well. Um, and those cameras are, are, are still in the running. But there's something I've always had a, 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 an affinity for DSLRs, good DSLRs. And so the third camera I picked up is the Nikon D780, you guys see this right here. Um, now this I bought used off of MPB, but what I like about this camera is the ergonomics are unmatched. They, I don't know, I, even to this day, I can pick up a mirrorless camera, Sony, Canon, Nikon, and nothing matches the ergonomics of a DSLR. I like the mirror slap, the clunk. Um, I like looking through an OVF, so it gives me that experience. And the D780 kind of was the last of the DSLRs. Um, this has like the Nikon Z6, sensor and it has the um, live view that kind of acts like a Nikon Z6. And so I can use this for video and stuff too, if I had to in a pinch, but I just really, really like using a DSLR. This thing's beefy, it's chunky. What I like too is that, you know, a lot of the new mirrorless lenses are getting really, really big. Now they, they make pancakes, of course, but you can get one of these cheap little, you know, D lenses for Nikon F mount for super, super cheap. And in particular, I picked Nikon for another reason I'll explain here in just a second, but I had this camera at one point and I returned it, not because I wanted to return it, but because when I was putting a battery and I broke the battery spring on the bottom and B&H said, hey, just return it. Um, and if you want another one, you have to buy a new one at full price. But I had originally purchased it at, at uh, used it for a really good deal. Um, so I didn't want to go pay the extra money. I found this on MPB for a decent price and I picked this up. So this is like my full frame, big DSLR, OVF, kind of fits that niche for me. So if I, again, you guys see where I'm going with this. If I want a pocket camera, I got the GR. If I got the do everything, small, portable, light, full frame, good autofocus, video, flip screen, that's the A7C2. And then if I want like this kind of this kind of experience, I've got the D780. And this will be, um, I can use this for professional shoots as well. And the reason why I picked the Nikon is because there are two other cameras I have here. Uh, sometimes I get a hankering for screw around with CCD sensors and old technology because Back then, they tried to replicate what Kodak film looks like and stuff. Now, this was actually a gift given to me by a friend of mine. This is the Nikon D70. It was actually his dad's. Um, I think you know his dad since passed, and he said, hey, I'm not going to use this. Do you want this? And I said, sure. He just said, just make me a promise never to sell it. 
And if you don't want any more, send it back to me. This is a crop sensor, CCD sensor um, made by Kodak, and it shares the same mount as the D780. And so besides this being a, a DX lens, I have some full frame lenses that can mount on this D70 and also mount on my D780. And so this gives me something a little bit unique as well. And I haven't shot this much on the channel. I want to. Uh, there's a macro lens they gave, gave to me with it. I'll, I'll mess with that a little bit. But it's the same thing. This is just like the D780 in the fact that it's got this big beefy build. And it also is a CCD sensor. So that should take care of that very rare occasion where I want something unique. Now, the reason why Nikon is so important is because, as you guys know, my favorite film camera right now is this Nikon FE2. This is also F mount, and so I can share lenses between the D780, the D70, and the FE2 when I decide I want to shoot film. I love this camera. Um, it's just the whole thing, man, like the brass top and you know the, the size, the weight, the, the build. I, I really love this FE2. I don't see this going anywhere for a long, 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 long time. I plan to shoot it for a long time. Um, so yeah, it's kind of just, this is my film camera. In addition to that, I have the Canon AE-1. My dad gave me this. It's the camera he shot pictures of me as a baby on. When he gave it to me, it was completely all jacked up, light seals, nothing worked properly. I sent it to have a, a CLA done and have it rebuilt. And so it works. Um, and so I, I don't shoot this as much because I don't enjoy it as much as the FE-2, but it's nostalgic for me and it's in really, really good shape. And so I have the AE-1 and the FE-2. And last but not least, I need your guys' help on this. I have never shown this camera on this channel. I was gifted to me from my mom's neighbor, this bad boy, a Rolleiflex TLR. I've never shot these before. This is super old. I want to get this CLA'd and rebuilt. I can't find anybody that responded to me. I've gone on YouTube or YouTube. I've gone on Google and found people, but nobody's really responded to me. But I'd love to run some medium format film through this and just see what it's capable of. This is a super cool camera. I think this thing's awesome. So if you guys have any contacts, that who, somebody you know who can take care of my Rolleiflex and rebuild it, I would love to give this a try and learn how to shoot this thing. And that's my camera setup. Um, I don't have any other cameras. I have a, a DJI Osmo Action, um, and that's it. I know that's a lot, but three film cameras, um, two DSLR bodies, one full-frame mirrorless, and a pocket camera. And so, you know, when I go on these trips, I'm not going to bring all of them. I'm just going to decide that, hey, this is what I'm bringing. So when I go to Colorado in a couple weeks, the GR is definitely coming with me. And I'll probably bring the A7C2 for any kind of video or just photos that maybe I want to take where I'm being intentional about photography. And that's what I'm going with. So if you're suffering from gas like me, if, you guys, if we're in the same boat, if you watch my channel and you're like, dude, I resonate with you, I know there's a lot of gear here, but I'll be honest with you, all of this gear I have here came from the sale of my Leica I bought a while ago. And so you can have one Leica with 150 millimeter Sumicron, or you can have this. They're all about the same price in total. And that's what I funded this with. And uh, I would say to you, you don't have to buy the same equipment that's, that's as expensive maybe, but I would certainly say if you have the hankering for different types of cameras, go figure out what those are and then purchase one of each you know, and from a lens standpoint, just so you guys are aware of this, pretty much everything's 50 and 28. So with the A7C2, I have the Zeiss 55, and I'm getting the 21.8. You'll see videos on that lens. With the Canon, uh, I'm sorry, the Canon, the Nikon D780, I have the 51.8D and the 28F2.8D. Um, so that'll work on all three of those cameras. And then on the Canon AE1, I have a 51.8 and a 28. 2.8 as well. And so 50 and 28 is kind of my thing. I, I might buy other lenses as I need them, but I'm going to try to stick to two focal lengths primarily um, throughout the rest of this year. And as you guys know, the GR is also a 28 millimeter equivalent. And so that gives them some consistency to my look, even though I'm using two different cameras that might have different color output, at least the field of view will have a similar look to it. This might sound insane, but six months is my goal. I don't want to make the promise because I break it all the time, but I'm, it's unhealthy to have this much gas. It's a time consumption, time suck, and it's really something you need to break it, to focus your time on something else. Go make some images. Right now it's cold and it's gray outside. It sucks here in Michigan. I'm not inspired to go out and shoot anything right now. Um, but I got to go out and shoot, you know, and, and take photos and just hone my craft. The only risk in this whole approach is that you really can't get to know a camera really, really well because they're all so different from each other. But I, I've tried that approach. It's not for me. I got I to gotta pick a few things that I always seem to circle around to 
That way, next time I have this urge to buy something, I don't go on B and H or Adorama or Amazon or the local camera store. I just look at my collection of cameras and say, which one of those is going to satisfy what I'm looking for for this trip or for this photography experience or whatever it is. That's what I want to do. And so that is my approach for 2024. This is how you cure your gas if you're someone like me. I don't know. What do you guys think? Comment section below. Total insanity or do you guys kind of get it? I appreciate it. See you soon.